so only had one class today. It was a, uh, I don't know if you know anything about MATLAB, but if you do, then maybe you can understand my pain. Yikes. But honestly, it wasn't that bad. There was kind of, um, so there's sort of two schools of thought when it comes to computer coding like that, I guess. There's like actually typing out specific codes. I guess that's more the pro level shit. But then there's, they sort of simplify it into a kid's version where everything is like little blocks and you connect them with lines. That's sort of what this class is gonna be about, which is good for me, because when it comes to anything coding wise, not a pro, not a pro, but plan is chest. Uh, so how long has it been since I actually pulled it? Uh, if you're if you're not aware, I think it was like three weeks ago, maybe a month. A month might be pushing, but somewhere in that 20, 30 days ago ish range. No, no, it must have been a month. But I'm doing like four plates on Incline Smith because I felt super strong that day. And on like the sixth rep, once I got into the hole and started pressing up, I finished the rep, of course, but I could tell I pulled something intramuscular, had a little muscular tear. Not brutal. Like, I'd say usually, as long as you don't have any bruising, you're not completely wrecked. But it was definitely to the point where I did not do any more chest that day. That day turned completely into a back day. But now I think I'm pretty much recovered. I'd say, like, I'm still a little bit careful. I'm not going to load up, like, four plates on incline barbell no spotter. I have done that in the past. Even the thought of it right now fucking scares me. But 315 is well within my wheelhouse again. So now all I gotta do is make sure I don't re-injure myself by doing anything stupid. Which I think I'm kind of on a little bit of a track of improvement when it comes to my, let's just say longevity. Because I'm kind of starting to see a little bit more benefit in lighter weight sets for, well, just lighter weight sets, you know? Like, really, what's going to give me a bigger chest, right? Doing a set of four plates with like seven reps, maybe seven, honestly, probably more like six. And then moving on or doing like three sets with 315 and each one is a failure of like 12. It's like there's a limit where... Am I a power lifter? No, I'm trying to just bodybuild, stimulate my muscles, get a gnarly pump, and doing insanely heavy weight, right to the point where it's not necessary. I'm starting to kind of understand that. So this chest day, I'm not sure what it'll look like. We're going to a, a, a gym that's a little bit out of the way. We're going out of the Shire for this one. Uh, so this gym's pretty fully fledged. A lot of gearheads floating around. Uh, it, it's pretty serious. Every piece of equipment you could fucking imagine. Uh, so, I'm sure I'll end up making use of, just by guessing, Smith machine, incline barbell, machine press, heck deck, cable flies, somewhere in there. Maybe I'll take a few out, add a few, but chest is never really a hard lift for me to, you know, have to really grind through. As long as whatever movement I'm doing feels good, I could be doing incline bench, Smith, uh, really whatever. So I'm not so picky when it comes to chest. And honestly, I'm not so picky when it comes to the variations or the specific exercises for chest either. I'd be perfectly satisfied of a chest day with just an incline bench and some cables for flies. But then I also like doing maybe two sets of incline bench, two sets of incline dumbbell, two sets of machine press, like some pack tech and then some cable flies and just doing like a ton of different movements. When it comes down to people like, uh, I, I feel like I keep saying this in every little car talk, but it's still, I still feel like it warrants mentioning. I'll see somebody like, oh, I'm doing, I'm doing a chest workout with the hammer. Should I do more machines or should I do more free weights? I, I'm doing the Arnold split. Is that going to work? You know, you're kind of losing, I think you're losing sight of the big picture. That doesn't really matter. Whatever split you do, as long as you got like, you know, you're hitting everything twice a week ish. As long as you go hard, it's probably gonna fucking work. You know, I say this every time. There's dudes who are huge, and not even huge. You don't have to be a fucking total freak, but guys who get results, 
doing completely different workouts. Right? There's calisthenics dudes floating around, just pull-ups, planges, you know, uh, planks, doing some, all sorts of crazy, just pull-up, uh, you know, playground workouts, and the dude's fucking yoked. Do you think it's because pull-ups are just the most effective back movement ever, and like push-ups are the greatest chest activating movement ever? No, it's just because whatever they're doing, they're doing it hard, they're recovering, and then they're going to get results. So before you try to get into any kind of nitty-gritty, real detail work, just remember that that sort of thing, like when you're really changing the small details of your training, you're only, <laughs> you're only adjusting, I'd say, maybe 5% of your results. The other 95%... Uh, let's just say the training itself, not including sleep and supplementation and recovery and like diet, but just the training itself, I'd say your effort and the actual intensity and like how hard you can make your sets, that's going to account for 95 fucking percent of it. And the other 5% is like your exercise selection. It might not be that steep, but I hope you sort of just understand I'm trying to say go hard. I did a whole rant in the last, on the way back from the gym. I was getting kind of like riled up seeing comments about, oh, you should leave a couple reps in the tank. You really shouldn't train that hard. Does that make any sense to you? Does that make any logical sense? Oh, don't train too hard, man. You don't want to get too big. You don't want to get too strong, do you? Oh, you don't want to get too lean. Come on. You, oh, you don't want to bench that much. Are you serious? Come on. What kind of mentality is that? Two syllables. Loser. another 30-ish minute drive, so I haven't even drank in the pre yet, but once we're 20-ish minutes out, then slam the two scoops of Amped, and the two scoops of Strawberry Kiwi Bloodshot, and I'm sure that this will end up being a freaky chest day, as always, so let's, uh, let's just hope it's not too busy. No lift off or anything. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do one more. Maybe. And then I'll do like 125. Got him, dog. 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 I won. I Yeah. No assisted reps on that one, but that was a good set. Let's move on to something.
I think, a few sets of this chest press. And honestly, we're already close to done. Maybe some flies. Actually, not maybe. Definitely some flies to finish. But... I mean, what was so complicated? Three sets of heavy pressing so far, and now just another one. Anybody without any training experience could come into the gym and do this workout. And if you pushed it hard, I think you'd be good. So, one more here. I think I gotta move on to flies. I've got a bad habit or a bad tendency of letting my front delts take over when my chest gets fatigued. Not in cable flies, but in pressing. I gotta work on that. But I'd say pressing done. Let's go do some flies. Either pec deck or cable, maybe both. Pose down and get out of here. You know, I was about to jump on like an old school pet fly, but it was a little bit too simple to the point where like you couldn't adjust the depth. So if I were actually tried to really get into it, I'd, I'd probably fucking rip my pecs off. So I'll stick to this one, even though this isn't really my favorite pec deck, but it'll be good enough. So I think set or two here, move on to cables and go pose down. Very good chest day so far. Gonna make sure to finish it off even better. Yeah, fuck it. Let's just do some cables. This only feels okay. Good set, but I don't want to do another. The absolute least hype thing I could ever see on a gym TV. Young Sheldon. What the fuck? Okay, so maybe not cable flies, but I like these cable presses sort of bent over. And I've kind of heard, I've seen comments where it's like, well, why don't you just put like an incline bench right here and do the pressing this way so you can push against the bench, you don't have to balance. I see the appeal, I get what you're saying, but I'm not doing so much weight that that even matters. Like this is light enough that my body weight bending over is enough to keep my torso from moving back and forth. So let's uh, just sit here for probably two or maybe three sets, just as kind of a finisher. Like these won't be the most intense sets. Like I'm not absolutely destroying my pecs, but I am gonna fill them the fuck up with blood, which no need to even talk about it. We're just gonna see it in a few minutes when we close down. Yeah. Okay. A little too heavy, and the cables are a little too high. I'll make those two adjustments, then run it up. And I'm thinking a superset. So press is here, just like the last set. It'll look exactly the same, but instead of just racking and being done, I'm gonna jump across from me to this arsenal strength pec deck. That pec deck over there compared to this one, yeesh, night and day. So I think this will be a perfect finisher. Okay. 
Oh. oh my god. That was probably the best pectic I've ever built. Let's go pose down. There's a speaker right above me. I might have to do some fancy shit to the uh, to the audio so I don't get copywritten. But this place is sick. They have like specific lights to pose in, like straight up bright ass LEDs. Honestly, just staring at it was kind of fucking with my eyes. So let's uh, let's see how we're looking after what was that? Eight, nine cents a chest? I can't remember. Uh. Yeah. It didn't feel like that much. Which, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Just say. Let's just throw this guy up here. I mean, what do you think? Ooh. I certainly feel pretty fucking pumped. I woke up light this morning. Fuck. I was 250.6 because I didn't drink enough fucking water last night. You gotta remember, you got a lot of weight in your fucking frame. That's just H2O. Oh, that was a good one. Oh. Okay. Lifted, pumped, and posed. Let's go home. Let's go home happy. I fucking love it. Okay, is this thing fucking working? Yeah. Lift complete. You know what? I tell you, I'll tell you something. If I got anything to tell you, it's that that sort of nasty set of Incline Smith machine felt pretty freaking cool. Like, look, if you saw, like, let's let's do a little flashback. Those first two sets, well, really just the first set. The second one was a little more, um, you know, throw the weight around style. But that first set of Incline Bench, uh, sure, slow, controlled. But honestly, that just doesn't do it as much for me. I like throwing this shit around. I do, you know what, I think this is the last day that I do a lot of incline barbell though, because I really think I've been leaving gains on the table. Because incline dumbbell, I was just kind of having, having a little chat with um, this guy Brandon I like, and we were talking about, like before I started lifting, because I was still waiting for the pre to sort of kick in, and we were talking about what chest movement you, you would do if you only had one. And look, I like incline barbell. I'm super strong on it, so partially that's probably why. Like, I can throw a lot of weight around. But I think my ego is really just motivating me to do it. Because incline dumbbell is, I would say, it's much more of a complete movement. Because with incline barbell, like, I love kind of bouncing around this lower, not even lower half. Like, I'm not doing totally half reps. But this lower, like, let's say two-thirds of the range of motion, that's where sort of the bread and butter is with incline barbell for me. Just bounce around down there where the tension is. But when you get to the top of the rep, if you fully straighten out, then there's not really any tension on your chest. Whereas with incline dumbbell, there is no rest. There is no resting position. Even when you get to the top and your arms are fully extended, the fact that the weight isn't connected to each other and it's kind of pulling away from the center of you, you're always fucking squeezing throughout the whole fucking range of motion, which I think I have been lacking on. Because it's not like chest is a weak point for me, um, but, I mean, like, we just saw the pose and it looks pretty fucking cool. Pumped, but unpumped, like, totally just normal build, woke up in the morning, started posing, 
chest needs to come up for sure. Um, I've said this a couple of times. I've got three body parts that I really want to try to blow up. And that's triceps first. Triceps is the one I really want to get going. Followed by legs. Followed by chest. So I think I've been doing too much incline barbell. I gotta change it up. And the only reason I haven't been changing it up is frankly just because I'm a, like an ego lifter at heart. And I don't want to lift lighter weights. But that's the wrong approach. I'm wrong for that. I gotta change it up. So incline dumbbell next time. Do not let me do incline barbell. Right. Call me out in the comments if I do. But solid lift and now I just get to go home and chill. I only have one class tomorrow. I think it's a lab. So if you have, I guess this is really just sort of uh, biased towards the college kids. But you know, normal dudes, whatever. You get the weekend or you have your days off. Make use of that time in a bodybuilding context. And get your fucking food in. Chow fucking down. Oh shit. That guy just got fucking pulled over. Not cool, man. You gotta follow the law. But, so for me, I don't have like eight hours of class every day. You know, days like yesterday and, t and tomorrow, I've only got one at noon. So I have a lot of time on my hands. So I don't want to just, you know, sit around all day and just fucking chill. I gotta get some meals in, you know. I'm not saying that it's, uh, massive commitment. I think people sort of overhype like uh, I mean there's the okay I guess it's, I can't really rip on this because he's the fucking legend but when Jay Cutler's like you know I didn't you can't, don't, can't have time for a social life shut everything else out you're in your own fucking world if you call me with fucking negative shit I'm gonna hang up on you I'm not saying you have to be that nuts about it but you do kind of have a responsibility to work around your life when it comes to your food. So if you know you want to hang out with your crew, prep a fucking meal. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, I'll have days in the summertime where I'm back with like my, uh, you know, all my high school buddies. We'll go out kayaking. Like we'll drive up to this place where you, know, you hop on a bus. They take you like 20 miles upstream. I don't know, like five miles upstream. And then you kayak back. Right, so we're out in the water for like four hours. I got two little fucking Tupperwares full of uh, just fucking whatever. I think it, last time it was uh, it was like turkey and rice and then a bunch of lo mein that I had left over. You know? So you don't have to be a total fucking recluse, but you, know, you do kind of have to be that guy walking around with a, some food in your backpack and a gallon jug to make sure you're fully hydrated. So when you go to the gym to hit whatever you're hitting, you're actually properly prepared because I can have lifts or I can have a lift go from sick to shit depending on what I do during the day right? if I'm fully rested if I'm fully fed if I'm fully hydrated guess what you think I'm gonna have a good lift I can almost guarantee it but let's say I got shit sleep didn't eat anything because I, I was like busy or whatever I had shit to deal with and was slacking on my hydration Maybe had like a glass of water in the morning and just sort of sipped at water fountains throughout the day. Night and day difference. I'm going to feel like total shit in the gym. Now, it's not like I'm not going to lift, of course, but if you want to go to the gym and you want to enjoy it, would it not make sense to put some more energy into your preparation? Right? I, um, I said this last time. I'm kind of stealing this from one of my old coaches back in, back in the day. But uh, proper preparation prevents poor performance, or in our case, prevents poor pumps. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind next time you know you're going to be away from your house for more than four hours. Right? That's your cue to either you know, prep a meal, and you don't even have to get that crazy with it, man. Get a shaker, two scoops of ISO H1. Is it creamy chocolate? I forget. Whichever the chocolate hostile protein is, two um, packets of like instant oatmeal, shake it up with a bunch of water. Dude, that's 50 grams of protein and 50 grams of carbs, 400 calories right there. That's, that's going to add up for sure. So, really, what I'm trying to say if you want results, you kind of have to be in a state to get results. 
or else you're just going to be fucking toiling away for nothing. You know, a guy could go to the gym with badass intensity for a whole year, but if he didn't eat in a calorie surplus, he'd, I mean, he'd be muscular for sure. He'd be strong. Uh, I'm not saying that's a bad situation, but he would not be any bigger because no matter how hard you train, you have to eat food to actually have energy and like you know, physical matter and protein to deposit onto your frame. You don't just gain muscle out of nowhere like magic. You, know, you got to put the building blocks into your body and then stress your system enough so that it has a reason to use them. So I think that's all I got to say. 30 minutes of cardio in the morning after a good night's rest followed by a freaky amount of food, and then back. Tomorrow is going to be a back day. Uh, I don't know where it's going to be. To be determined. But no matter what gym it is, whether it's a gym that has some badass, you know, hammer strength back equipment, or a bunch of old school rows, or pullover machines like this gym, or if it's just a fucking Planet Fitness where all I do is pull downs, cable rows, and pullovers, Right. Whether it's a relatively simple or a complex workout, I'm going to go hard, and I know for a fact I'm going to get a solid pump. So, ideally, that will be you as well with whatever body part you're hitting. And do not think that I don't know you're not doing your cardio. I don't, I don't, know, what to, I don't know what to say to fucking get you to do it. Frankly, I think it's a lost cause. I feel, oh, I feel like I'm overwhelmed with malice, as though there's no possible way I could convince you to do your cardio. But even if it's an impossible task, I'm gonna keep telling you to. 30 minutes, seated bike, play on your fucking phone, it'll be over like that. So keep it in mind, but I'll fucking see you next time.